looks like everybody can hear me. Great. Okay, I'm going to start again because I think I was muted. So I'm sorry. This is Hillary Strong. I'm with the Small Business Development Center at Yavapai College, and our team of six covers Yavapai County. So we work with those that want to start businesses in the county of Yavapai or our existing businesses and want to grow and diversify. And so I'll talk a little bit more about our services. Our services are at no cost to you as a resident of the county. And we have 10 offices across Arizona. Every county in the United States has an office like ours. So thank you all for joining me today. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get started. So how do we start and grow our businesses? Uh, so I'm going to be going over how to start your business in Arizona. There are some steps you need to do. I'm not going into detail. You need to reach out to us and we're happy to walk you through that. I'm just kind of going to do a general overview of what's required. I'm going to talk about two of the easiest things that you can do if you are starting or growing your business. And that is the Google business profile, the Facebook business page. And I'm going to talk about some tips to, to help you organically without paying increase your reach and your branding. So what do we need to do? Well, the 10 steps, you need to choose a name and make sure that no one else has that name. You can check the availability on Google or you can go to eCorp, which is where you would actually register uh, as an LLC. There are two types. So again, like uh, I think there was one that was like sunset something. So in Arizona, there's a lot of businesses that start with sun. So I would, <laughs> I would encourage you to make sure that you're checking out um, on Google. So there's two types, really, a sole proprietorship and an LLC. The main difference that I just want to talk about, we are not attorneys, so I can't tell you what kind of LLC. I can explain the differences. But a sole proprietor is um, where you have your business and that is intertwined with your personal assets. So there's, you, you take on full liability and it really has to do with risk, the amount of risk that, you're, um, that you may experience um, in your business versus an LLC. Creating the um, limited liability corporation basically separates your personal assets from your business assets. So it kind of puts that barrier um, between, so if someone tries to sue your business, they can't come after you personally. They can't come after your car. They can't come after your house, those kinds of things. Um, but as a sole proprietor, you can also get business insurance. So you can, you know, have a level of, um, and many sole proprietors choose that. So if you need, and then there's different kinds of LLCs. Um, and so I'm not going to get into the details of that. But again, our offices um, are happy, our staff's ha happy to walk you through that process, give you information and figure out um, help you figure out which one's going to work for you. So if you haven't done anything and you are selling, you are a sole proprietor <laughs> just automatically um, and unless you you go for the LLC. You also, there is, you know, there's an LLC. So you maybe have a, a business name, but that's really not the business name you go by when you're selling, right? Which is called a DBA, doing business as. In Arizona, it's not required that you register the DBA. There's really nowhere to register that. So my business, I have a business, many of our team members do. I have a DBA different from my licensed LLC. And so one of the things that I did, because I, I didn't want anybody else to try to take the name, I can't keep them from getting an LLC with that name unless I change my LLC name, but I can register a trade name through AZSOS, it's basically the Secretary of State, and it's $10. And so I did that for my DBA, okay? So that's where you can register your trade name, and then hopefully no one will use your, your DBA. So that's kind of a workaround um, for that, which is pretty common. So there's also city and county requirements. Uh, depending upon, you know, I'm from the city of Prescott, and they do not have a business license in Prescott. So I don't have to, but in many, Chino, Cottonwood, depends upon where you are, um, they do have, you have to register and, um, or other, you know, you just have to get a, a city license. So you need to check with the city or town that you're in. And there's also a county requirement. Now this only applies to LLCs. This is not, if you're a sole proprietor, you don't have to do this, but um, the LLC 
um, has to, you have to post your LLC in a newspaper within 60 days after going to the eCorp email, that first email. And these are clickable in the presentation. Um, so you will get a copy of the recording and a copy of the presentation where you can just click on these, okay? And so then you just have to, and in the newspapers, it's whatever newspaper, any county newspaper. I think I did mine in the Verde Independent and it was like $100. Getting an LLC is $85. So these are, and then if you have a city license, you know, that could be, you know, $60 or something like that. So those are some of the things um, that would be required. Now, the TPT, we are actually going to be hosting a TPT. It's a privilege tax, <laughs> according to Arizona. So what this basically is, it's a sales tax that if you sell products in your company, um, not services so much, but if you sell products, physical products, you have to pay the sales tax. Basically, you collect it and you pass it on to Arizona, right? And they call it the TPT transaction privilege tax that we get to pay Arizona. So, so that's a additional um, tax that you would have to do. And there's, um, so we'll be having a training, but you can go to the Department of Revenue, look up TPT, and there's a detailed listing of what um, you need to do. So if you're going to do an LLC as a sole proprietor, you can just use your social security number for your business. You know, it's all one. But if you get the LLC, you'll need basically a tax ID number, you know, social security number for your business. So that's called an EIN or a TID number. And you can just go to the irs.gov. Again, this link is clickable. And folks, that's free. So just make sure that um, you don't pay for that. Um, you also can then, once, once you get, uh, you'll get articles of organization when you apply for your LLC, they'll be in your account. They're, they're created automatically when you uh, apply for your LLC. You can take your EIN number, your articles of organization, and take those and open up a business bank account. And again, reach out to us and we're happy. That's a, just a, a real brief overview of the 10, 11 steps in starting a business in Arizona. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's talk about Google Business Profile. Who has one in the room? All right, and that's free, right? Okay, it's free, people. So you need to claim your Google Business Profile, and I'm gonna explain in a minute why. And you need to claim and verify. The reason that a verification, again, you can just click on this link, is important is, um, it verifies your business location. And so it's really important to get verified. Um, you can show who you are, your branding. You can put your products on there, your services. You can post up to 100 photos and videos. Did you guys know that? Okay. You show up on search and maps. You can create posts. You can put offers up. Um, you can respond to reviews, respond to messages. So again, it's all about getting discovered and making sure if you're gonna be closing on a holiday, you wanna update your hours. You know, you can get a lot of bad, people get really upset when, you know, you go and it's not, uh, people aren't open. All right, okay, and why is this important? Well, Google has about 92% of the search market. You know, when we go to search something, everybody goes Google it, right? You don't say really Bing it or <laughs> Yahoo it, <laughs> it's Google it. So with 92%, um, this is where people are going to search. And so if you have your profile set up, um, you're more likely to come up when they do search. Uh, you know, grocery store near me, coffee shop near me. You know, these are common things that we're searching on our phone. So, okay, so this is what this looks like. On the left side is what a profile. So I just pulled up. Uh, we realized that we actually had one. <laughs> so why we're like, well, who's in charge of this? We better be you know, doing what we're telling people to do. So if you see this, help us out, folks. We only have two Google reviews. We'd like to get four, five stars. So we, we got some work to do, right? Um, so uh, you want to completely fill out your profile, you know, add photos, add videos, all of your information. Um, this also, you can have categories over here, questions and the answers. So you can answer people's questions. Um, and then it also brings up, you know, some videos that I added. So again, just, just want to, um, and it shows our products over here in the bottom left. 
And if you don't know how to find that, you signed up with a Gmail email, go into your Gmail and there'll be a little, it looks like a little house and it says business profile. If you click on that, that takes you right in on how to edit it. We just figured that out. So anyway, here's some more fun things you can do. You can figure out the trends on Google, um, the ads. What's cool about going into the ads, even though you don't have to do an ad, is they have this keyword planner in there and it's free and it helps you. And you can even look in your um, Google profile what words people are using to search you. And so you might want to add those words to your profile, you know, put them in your description. So, um, and then you can also, what's cool is that they, it will show you the last six months of analytics. It'll show you how many people called you, visited your website, looked at your profile. So there's analytics in there also. So again, all that is low hanging fruit and it is free. Okay. So next, I want to talk about Meta. Meta is formerly Facebook. And so Meta really is Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. What else do they own? Do we know? I can't think. I'm still waking up here. So it's, it's all of their um, platforms, basically. Um, so one of the things as a small business, or if you're thinking about starting a business, is that Facebook and a lot of people have different personal opinions about Facebook, but you really need to come from this as a business. And what can I get for my business? You know, and so Facebook setting up a business profile um, is free. And so it just takes a little time to do that. And one of the new things is they have kind of, they're rolling into this, what's called new pages experience. It's basically their new format for um, how things look in Facebook. You know, they're always changing something. So that's basically, that's all that that is. You'll see NPE, um, but they are changing some things in Facebook as far as what we're seeing in our news feed, right? We all, if you're in Facebook, we all have a personal news feed, basically the pages we follow, you know, friends, family are gonna pop up. Well, as a business, we do the same thing. We like certain pages, we follow people, all of that. Well, Facebook has kind of turned into more of a discovery engine in the fact that if I like, for instance, tennis or uh, I play ukulele, Facebook's going to try to serve up content personally to me that maybe matches the things that I'm interested in, right? So that kind of makes sense. And so yeah, I'm also interested in small business. So I get a lot of things to those. Does that make sense? That's the easiest way to kind of think about kind of what Facebook's doing. So they're trying to, it's called recommended content. So also Facebook after Google, Google's got 92% of the market. They also own YouTube. So that kind of, if you think about that, that kind of makes sense. But Facebook's number two, as far as discovery. So when you go into Facebook and you want to search something, um, you type in keywords, okay? Think hashtags, right? It's all about keywords. And so those keywords are, again, important, not only in Google, but in Facebook. What are people, um, you know, again, you know, coffee shop near me, gas station <laughs> near me. Sometimes that's very important. They also have, um, pay, oh, page likes are going away. So basically you're gonna get only follows now. The likes are just kind of gonna go away with the new page experience. There's also messaging app. Who doesn't, who's never used like direct messages someone privately? We've all done that, you know, in our personal. I want you to think about taking advantage of this in the business flat platform, you know, please DM me for additional information for a price or something like that. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the messaging apps that you can, um, you can add to your business and, and really kind of use that. Uh, DM feature, which I think a lot of maybe younger folks are very familiar with. <laughs> but, you know, my mom, I had to tell her, no, you need to private message me. Quit putting my stuff on my profile. <laughs> it was a learning curve. So it's okay. So uh, one of the things when we think about Facebook too is video centric focus. Videos, whether they're, you know, live videos, reels, we'll talk, you know, it's basically short form, short and sweet, you know, videos. Um, you, when we think of videos, we typically think about YouTube, right? Who hasn't been on YouTube, right? For a training or music. I think music's the most popular um, on YouTube, but um, they have YouTube shorts. 
So YouTube and Facebook and all of their platforms are kind of coming on the heels of TikTok and trying to do, you know, with these shorts and the reels and all that, um, YouTube shorts, they're trying to compete with TikTok. So um, video is very important if you're thinking about marketing for your business. Also education, they're adding some other features. You can have up to no, new five profiles. Let me get to this. New group features, and you can actually trans, translate languages in real time, which is, you know, for some businesses, especially, um, you know, up here off Route 66, which we're off of, you know, people are traveling from all different types and you can actually translate um, your posts to that. I have a client in Seligman who does that and does marketing with different languages. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so Facebook is the number one social media platform in the world that I think they've got over now to over 2 billion daily active users. So people that are on Facebook every day. Monthly users are almost 3 billion, okay? Where they go on at least once a month to their profile. Oh, here we go, that's what I forgot. So across all the platforms, 3.6 billion people are on Meta, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, or Messenger. And um, there's been increase in video watch time, 30% increase. So again, we're seeing Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you know, really focus on the um, short term, short form video. Users spend almost 20 hours a month or 33 minutes per day on Facebook or Instagram, WhatsApp. Would you agree with that? We're always checking our phones, right? Yeah, I know. I, you kind of look at that and go, really? 20, 20 hours of my life? <laughs> All right. Okay. And let's see. Okay. There's my cursor. Sorry. This is driving me insane. Okay. There we go. Okay. So how do we take advantage, right? We have to think of it as our small business. How do we take advantage of this cool tool that reaches billions of people? So most of us will have our audience or target markets on Facebook. So you can create online events like we did for this. What's cool about online events is you create it is that they're searchable. You know, what's going on near me? I'm, I've only been here a year in Prescott. And so I'm still discovering like kind of what's going on, you know, what's going on for music or food festival or different things going on. Um, and you can create those, whether they're in person or online, you can sell your products. You can actually hook it up to a payment and people can actually pay you on Facebook. I think it, is it called Facebook pay is that anybody know? Okay, I haven't done that, but I think that's what it's called. You can book appointments. And you can go live. I think we're going to go live maybe after this. We got started. I want to start on time. So we're going to, you know, use video to your advantage. And you have that on your phone, right? You have the little go, bot, go live button on your business page. Short and sweet. Ske you can also schedule. Facebook has a scheduler inside of it called the planner. Um, and you can schedule posts and stories. Has anybody ever done a story? Michelle has. Okay. And the cool things about stories is they come, they're right in the top of your phone, or if you're on desktop, you know, they're right up top. They only last for 24 hours, but they kind of do this FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. So they kind of, um, they're just one thing, fun thing to think about. Um, if you have something maybe that, you know, you're going to go live on an event or something, you know, um, stories can be really cool. Facebook also provides data, insights. Who's, who are your target? Who's on your page? Who's looking at your stuff? How many people view, viewed your video and how long did they watch the video? And then you can actually retarget them in ads. You're not gonna know who exactly, but, and um, so that's pretty cool. They, they do provide a lot of free data. You can create groups. Oh, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> we have things falling in the room. It's okay, no one's hurt during this presentation. Um, so you can create groups and, and create a community. Um, who is in, who follows a group? Like, isn't there an Ash Fork community group? I think I joined that. Yeah, right? We're all in groups, depending upon where we live, what we're interested in. Obviously, what kind of groups do I follow, gang? <laughs> Small business, ukulele and tennis. Yes, you got it. So again, it's it's what we're interested in, right? 
Um, so they can be very powerful and you can create those and have those on your business page. You can, you know, people that are whatever, organic farming or any kind of business. Um, mine is jewelry. You know, if people are interested. I could do a, you know, tips for jewelry. Well, I'm not there yet, but eventually that's, that's, it's in my mind. You can also get reviews on Facebook, just like Google. So it's really an, it's a lot of cool features. Reels. So if you want, I do have a client that is currently getting paid by Facebook because he is a super video creator. Um, he's kind of that outlier that you're like, wow, but he's getting paid and you can also get paid. Like if you ever watched a, a video on Facebook and they have stars, give us stars. Well, you have to pay for those stars, but you know, like I listen to a guy who does free ukulele and he puts up the notes and he does the song twice and he kind of talks to you about how to strum it, how to do it. And it's really fun. And during COVID, frankly, I couldn't go and hang out with my people and play. So we jammed via Facebook. And so I did give him some SARS because he did it for free. He's just great. And so um, you can do fan descriptions. You can do video ad revenue share. Basically, his because he's a video creator, um, his videos gets placed in other ads and he gets paid. So it's pretty cool. You can boost or run ads. Who has boost or run ads? Okay, it looks like some in the room have actually done that. Um, so cool. And um, boosting is one of the easiest things you can do. It kind of walks you through it. But you have to, in addition to some of the things I'm going to talk about today, you do have to have a budget for marketing, just like you do everything else. You have to have a budget so that you can reach more people. The average organic reach, which I hate to say, is like here. I, I knew that was the next slide. No, I didn't. But it's, it's about 5.2%. So think about if you have 100 people that follow your page, only five of them would see any one post of yours. Now, that's just the average. Um, when you do videos and you do live videos and, you know, you, you create interesting things, that's going to be way above that. So we just, you know, you know, I'll post the average, you know, one out of 1500. If you have more followers, you get more engagement. That's kind of how that works. So we need to kind of be creative, right? In what we're doing. Okay. Everything's popping up today. So we need to focus on both social and business goals. Social, right. We want to engage people. We want followers. We want video views. We want people to, the nicest thing people can do is share. Sharing is caring. That's my tagline. Share, you know, ask friends, family, when you're starting out, you know, to share your, um, and you don't want to ask all the time, but once in a while, you know, just say, hey, I reached out to Michelle and said, hey, Michelle, can you, can you share this? Because she's connected here locally, right? So, so you reach out and you might have some super fans that really love your stuff. Like, honestly, I love Michelle's jams. I am addicted to the marmalade. In fact, I asked her to bring some today. So my point is, <laughs> is, um, you know, sharing is caring and we just need to um, help each other out. You help other businesses out, right? You help your, fan, your family and friends. And then we need to think about business goals, right? Obviously, we're in business to collect leads, whether you want people to, to contact you for an appointment, uh, you want to get someone in your sales funnel because you want to get them in your service, traffic to your website if you have products and or services, and sales, right? I mean, who's working for free? Anybody? No, no one's working for free. So we need to think about um, that. Okay. So let's talk about organic. What does organic mean? Well, it's not organic farming. <laughs> it's organic reach tips. These are for free. So without paying Facebook, what are the kinds of things that we can do to help our content, our videos reach out? Okay. So these are some of the tips. You have to be consistent and responsive. So if someone comments and you don't ever respond, that does not look good. Even on Google, you need to do that, right? You need to respond. Thank you so much for your, whether it's good or bad. If it's bad, sometimes you, you know, you got to be on that right away, please. And that's when you want to use, please get them offline, get them. So they're not continuing to say something and it may not even be true or somewhat true. 
but you want to get them offline. So direct message me. Here's my email. Here's my phone number. Get them offline. Um, but you also want to be sharing um, your reviews, right? And so there's ways that every computer has a little like, kind of has a little scissors. It's called like a snipping tool or something on your computer. And you can go and snip those reviews and repurpose those. Add those to Facebook. Add them on your Google profile. Add them to your um, website. So there's little ways that you can take all these cool reviews you have and, um, and share that. One of the things I think when I meet a new client, they want help. You know, my background is more marketing, sales, social media focused. So I work with a lot of clients and my colleagues' clients on those topics is sharing. I, I'll look at a website and they don't, they don't have a picture of themselves. They don't have a picture of why they got started. You know, it's like, who is this business? Who, who, who am I going to be buying stuff from or engage, engaging with? You know, share your stories, share your why. We all have a story, um, why we get started, right? And so we want to share that and, and get as personal as you, as you can, as you feel comfortable with. You also can connect your personal and your business page, but you don't have to. You have to manually click connect them. You can add your business name to your work section of your personal profile. And if you start typing that in and then you can connect that, you know, I currently own whatever business. And so that way, if your friends or family are on your profile, they can click and it'll take them to your business page. So some people want to do that. Some people don't. So again, if you have any questions about what I'm talking about, give us a call. <laughs> 928-717-7237. I think I finally remember the number. It takes me forever to remember things. People also are looking at, you know, what causes, social causes are you involved in? What do you believe in? You know, we have dogs. We adopt them from the Humane Society. That's just something that, and that's how my husband and I met, which is kind of funny. So it's, you know, it's just something that's just close to our heart, right? And so what's close to your heart? Is it something in your community? Are you the sponsor of your baseball team or your, you know, foster kids or whatever it is, you know, make sure that you're kind of, you stand for something and try not to be political or religious as much as you can, because that does really divide. We're in this divisive state and you want to kind of be neutral, you know, as your business, you just want to be positive, support something positive that impacts the community or the larger place that we live in. You also want to try to stand out with your brand, personality, uniqueness, and storytelling. So if you look on Facebook, just go to your feed, you know, sometimes people are funny. Sometimes they're very serious. You know, I mean, if you look at this, who watched the Super Bowl? Anybody? No one in this room? I ate. I didn't really watch it. I was eating and drinking, but, um, you know, I'll, Think of all the creative Super Bowls known for their crazy kind of advertising. I mean, we all kind of know that, right? The ads, like even they're coming in Facebook today. So you can watch them at, even if you're not interested in Super Bowl. So just think about that. Like how interesting, you know, we don't have these million dollar advertising companies, right? We have ourselves, but we're all unique and have a, a brand and personality. So don't be shy in sharing that. What else can we do? Everything you do must kind of have a purpose, whether you're trying to sell something or get them to come to your website or stop by your booth at a, at a fair you're going to, right? So we need to really think about, and sometimes it's just branding, right? You're just trying to get people to be interested in what you're talking about, what you're selling, what your services are, but try to have um, a purpose and a call to action. What do you want them to do? Call you? email you, what, what, you know, you tell people what they need to do and they're going to just hopefully do it. Right. <clears throat> that's what my husband says. And I'm like, no, that's not how that works, but um, try to be entertaining and educating. We call it edutaining. That's our word on our team. We try to, you know, we've been trying to, in the last year, use some of these tools to our advantage. We do Facebook lives from our trainings and when we're out and about to show people we are real people. We're out in Yavapai County meeting real people, real businesses. We're not so scary. You know, um, our services are at no cost. Did I mention that? 
our services are at no cost and we don't bite. So <laughs> give us a call. Follow your competitors. You need to be seeing what they're doing. What are they up to? I follow a lot of the other SBDC offices, right? Because if they're doing something cool, well, we got to do it too or do something cooler. So just think about that. You can actually, and you can find out, whoa, my competitors really aren't doing a lot. You know, that's to your advantage. They're not responding to your reviews. They haven't posted in two months. What does that say? I always get very nervous when I don't see anything. Um, and they're like, oh, I haven't posted in two months. Well, that makes me nervous. It would make a customer nervous. Are you still in business? You know, so you just got to remember that. Try to mix it up. Try different content. See what works. Sometimes we post something that I think is going to be hilarious. Uh, no. <laughs> Or I do something and then people just love it and share it. You just, you never know. So just try new things. Don't be afraid. Also tagging, tagging friends, tagging pages. If you go to an event, say you um, belong to a chamber, you want to tag them. If you want to learn how to tag, give us a call. I'll show you how to do that. Host a live stream. So I'm hosting a live stream. I'm going to put a plug in for tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day early. How to get more love for your business. Dunusha and I will be online at 7.45 a.m. And hey, if you miss it, no problem because live stay on your page. So it will always be there. If you don't want to wake up at 7.45, that's no problem. You can watch it afterward. So again, host a live stream. I'll be going live from an app called StreamYard, which is really cool. It's like having, it's kind of like um, Zoom, like we're doing now. But we're going to be using a different platform that I've used before. It's $25 a month. And you can, what's cool is you can go live on several different pages at once. So instead of sharing your stuff from Facebook to LinkedIn to YouTube, you know, you're doing all these things, um, it actually can go and, and post out live. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, there's lots of cool streaming apps. Um, you could just host a Q&A about your product. You know, you can have guests on. You can have up to 10 guests. So we started using live stream. I'm just going to go on a quick tangent on this. Um, and I have a couple of clients that are thinking about it for their businesses, it, a new way to reach people. And some are podcasting, so, you know, trying all different things. Um, because during COVID, we couldn't have meetings. I worked for a chamber in Colorado. And so basically our networking kind of stopped, right? Everybody was afraid to connect and see each other, even with masks. And so we had to figure out a way to communicate what was going on, um, you know, different programs, the PPP and all those different things. And so we started a live stream show and, um, and they're still doing it today because people can't always come to a networking event or come to a training today. I mean, thank you for those that are here. Thanks, Wickenberg. If I hope we have some people there, but they're saying, you know, we have trainings, but I'm working, I'm doing my business. I can't come. And I get that. You know, so that's why we record these, you know, we, our staff works Monday through Friday and other days <laughs> sometimes. Um, so find super connectors. That's another thing. You know, who's your super fans? You have people that are connectors. Like I was glad I, I connected with Michelle, who's here in Ash Fork because she is from here. She knows everybody, you know, she's a super connector in your community, right? And so you need to think about those people. How can you reach out to them? And say, hey, you know, could you share this? I could really use your help. Sometimes just asking. Everybody wants people to be successful. <laughs> I don't care if you're in competition. Um, ask followers to favorite your page. That means, what does that mean? That they're going to see more of your posts and videos. So these are just simple ways. What kinds of content? Again, if I'm going to say anything this year, and it's not me, this is what Facebook wants. This is what YouTube wants. This is what everybody wants, even Google. They want video content, short and sweet. Or on YouTube, if you have a how-to, you know, I always go to YouTube, how to do this technique in jewelry or whatever I'm looking for. And they have longer tutorials. YouTube's kind of known for that. But, you know, for just starting out, I think you should keep everything under a minute. That would be my best advice. And if you can do a lot under 30 seconds, that's even better because what attention span is three seconds. I think somebody's falling asleep now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's that short. It's about grabbing their attention right away. Um, if you look at your data from doing videos on Facebook, it says, you know, three seconds, 15 seconds, 
60 seconds and it just drops off. It's just our attention spans. We're going through our phones. We're just distracted. I don't know. Maybe we all have ADHD now. I don't know. <laughs> but the fact is, is that our attention span is just very short. Um, so you could do a quote. You can answer questions about your product or service. Means, gifts. Who isn't like sent a funny gif on their personal? Like I do that because sometimes it conveys really what I want to say in the, in the best way possible that I could just have to text saying, you know, I love you, or that was LOL. That was funny. And you can just find a funny gift. So again, humor, people love humor, photos, links, questions. So there's all different types um, of content that you can create and how to do this. Well, one of the things that I have used for 10 years, and I'm just happy to be a Canva fan, canva.com. It is free folks free. Did I mention it's free? Michelle's saying she uses it. Yes. So um, it has a lot of cool, really cool ways to create content, it has templates, it has an editing tool. You can upload your logos, your images, your videos, all of that. They do have a pro version that's 120 a year, which I've had for a long time. And it just has more bells and whistles. It's pretty fun. But to start off with, you can just sign up with Canva. I use NVIDIA. I've done Wave, Vimeo. Vimeo is kind of like YouTube. It's a, it's a video hosting platform, you know? Um, so Adobe Spark, Canva, you can put on your phone. I believe Adobe Spark is free and can also be put on your phone. If you want to learn, Donna Morowitz, I've been following her for a long time. She's actually out of Australia. She's always talking about poisonous snakes out on her. I'm like, who would live in Australia? But she's darling. And she does, she's a Canva like creator, I think there now. And she has a lot of great content tips. So she's one of the people that I follow. Feel free to follow her and get some ideas. How do we stop the scroll, right? How do we stop those fingers on our content? Well, we need to have great visuals, catchy copy, call to action, hashtags. Let's talk about hashtags for a moment. Hashtags have basically got born on Instagram, right? And you see they have like 10. Well, on Facebook, they finally embrace them, but the, the, they're for search purposes. They're not to be meant to be really be seen in your posting. So if you look here and see the see more, if you were to click on that, you could go dot, 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 and you want to put them at the bottom because that means if someone searched, like we did this um, entrepreneurs business training, we're doing this pioneer pitch, it's kind of like Shark Tank. And so we put them at the bottom. And then if someone was to search on Facebook, you know, small business, business training, we might pop up organically. So it's just another way that, that your page might just get found organically when people are searching. That is the purpose of, it's just like searching on Google and you don't use the hashtag, but you're using keywords, coffee shop, Prescott, Prescott, Arizona, you know? So again, if you need help with hashtags, give us a call. Have a great offer. Have something awesome, you know, like Valentine's Day. Who hasn't seen offers for 20% off? Come by, get a free rose if you spend this, whatever. Um, so think about great offers that you, that pertain to your business, you know, maybe um, there's funny holidays, you know, there's chipmunk day, there's double chocolate chip day. There's, I mean, every crazy day you can think of, there has to be some that pertain to your business. Again, mix it up, test, test, test. Another thing I want to just talk about is having a link at the very top of your post because they only show a couple lines at the top. So you want to have, you know, call me, register. If it shows up blue, it means we tagged them. We tagged. So Moonshot AZ, Pioneer Pitch, Freddy Valley is going to get notified that we did this post. And that's why you tag. Because what, what might they do? Share it. What we say, sharing is caring. And also emojis. Again, we love them. We love them. So put those in. They're fun. Test, test, test. We never know it's going to work. Your ratio. So talking about content, how much should be video? A lot. What did I say? Okay. A lot. All right. Got it. Video, video, video. It's not me. It's the social media folks saying this is this is the platforms and saying, gimme, 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 gimme that video. Even if it's not perfect, 
our, our videos are never perfect, but if you've seen Marie, she is a video queen and we love her because she loves to be on video and none of us do. So we are always behind the scenes, but videotape your customers, you know, how happy they are with your product or service, right? Um, you could be talking. I like to talk on video. Like now you guys can't see me. I hope not <laughs> because I'm behind the scenes. That's my comfort zone again. So video, images, photos, native video. When I talk about native video, it means that YouTube and Google are here on one side, Facebook, Instagram are over here. So if you take a YouTube link and put it on Facebook, they don't like that. They don't play well in the sandbox. So what do you have to do? Well, you need to download the video from YouTube, take that MP4 file and upload it to Facebook organically or natively, right? You're not putting, it's easier to grab that YouTube link, share it, boop, boop, boop. Well, you can do the YouTube links on your website, newsletter, um, uh, what else is I thinking? Um, your Google profile, you know, whatever. They, well, Google loves it. They own YouTube, right? They're gonna they're gonna show those YouTube videos. And if you want, on a side note, if you look at Google now, you actually start to notice that you'll get YouTube videos coming up, not not um, like links. It's actual the videos. So just next time you go to Google, you'll start to notice that. And then links and status. So that's kind of the what's popular. And when I talk about content ratio, you know, your promotion should be a small amount, your cool content, your branding, this is what we have going on, all that, all these other things should be the majority of your content, right? And the salesy stuff should be that 20%. So that's just kind of a good, you know, 80% good stuff, creative, fun, whatever, um, little shorts, reels, videos, uploaded videos. And if you're not comfortable, record a video, you know, and what's cool on Canva, you can actually create presentations and videos and you can do voiceover. And I think that's with the pro version, but it is pretty cool. So me, I can create this presentation. I could go on and I could be voiceovering the whole thing and then download it. And again, then I don't have to be live. I can upload it to Facebook or, you know, whatever. So there's just lots of ways to kind of get out of being live. Okay. Uh, keep going because I want to answer some questions. Be consistent. You have to post regularly every week. Try new things. Try video. Paid. We do need to have some paid, right? We do need to have some boosted. We need to have some ads. You have to have even a small budget. Three to five hashtags on Facebook. If you connect <clears throat> Instagram and Facebook, uh, Instagram wants a lot more hashtags. That's okay. Don't, don't worry about that. You don't have to change it. Um, link to Instagram if you can. Start a group. Encourage direct messages. Get people to contact you. Get them to you know reach out. Use a chat bot. So there's these cool messenger apps called ManyChat, Mobile Monkey. There's a lot more. They're not that expensive. And so if someone comes and say they have questions, you can set up all these cool things that it's kind of an automated that they will get basically they're chatting with you, not you, but your page on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock and you're answering all their questions right then and there. Yeah, so um, there's a gal, uh, I'm gonna try to get her, uh, Kelly, she's from Colorado and she's really big into, I think it's Mobile Monkey, one of these two, and maybe have a training on that and how you can really maximize that for your business. Try to give, 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 more than get, right? We give to get, um, call to actions above the fold before they have to click anything. Look at your data, be short and sweet, join groups, be helpful, share other people's content. Let's talk about that a minute. So a lot of people will post pictures and especially on Google and do reviews. Um, they might just comment on your post. Oh, I love your stuff. It's beautiful. Use that. That's, that's a review. It's maybe not in the review section, but or maybe you got a really nice letter from someone who, who gets letters anymore. But, you know, I mean, or maybe they sent you a nice email about your product or service. You know, these are all things to use, um, you know. So think about the comments you get. Uh, User-generated comment, that's run a contest or giveaway, short challenge. Make sure that you, you can create all your branding on Canva or Adobe Spark for free. 
your colors, your logo, all of that. So it's consistent. You have a consistent look. Share social proof. Again, what we just talked about, all those little things add up. Um, try to limit your promotional posts and research who it is you're trying to reach. You may have more than one target market or audience. Um, and you need to focus your content on creating for those markets, not for what you like per se, but what do they need to know? How can you be more helpful to them? These are the resources from today. Social Media Examiner is a really good resource for all things social media. Um, Hootsuite's really good about uh, statistics. One thing that's cool here is this link tree. Has anybody heard of that? It's kind of cool. If you click on it, you can create and put all of your like contact information, your website, your Facebook, everything, and that you give them, you have one link tree app. If they click on the, the link tree app that's free or the link, you have all your content information or all your, you know, Facebook website, all of that. Um, it's pretty cool and it's free. So one of my clients was using that and I was like, hey, that's really cool. So I wanted to share that. Okay, so I'm open for questions. This is how you reach us. Again, we have a six person team located all over Yavapai County. Our business consulting is free at no cost to you at any time. It's confidential. Um, we do a lots of free trainings and webinars. If you check out yc.edu slash SBDC, you can also click and register for services and one of our counselors will give you a call. So let's open it up. Questions? Come on, questions. Anybody? Online, how to get the support. Uh, the how to get the presentation? That is a good question. Yes. So it will be posted at this link, yc.edu slash SBDC. And if you go down just a titch, there's a tab that says webinars and recordings, I believe. And if you click on that, it'll have upcoming trainings, which we have several every month on all different topics. And then it'll have a, a little button you can press for pre recorded. So it will take just a few days to get this up and running you will act, be able to access the recording. You also, I will have some other resources and the presentation that has all the live links in it. Any everything other questions? That, yes. Everything that was you said today can be accessed on the webinar in a few days. Right. And uh, I yes. Write that down, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we are recording. I just checked. I'm like, oh no, do we record this? Everything I said, I'm out of breath. So. <laughs> Yes, Denisha, we have another question. Okay. An app to go live. Well, you can, um, you could use probably one of the streaming apps and just do a broadcast live. You know, you just click all the, um, with like StreamYard, you can connect to three, I think for $25. And if it's a little bit more than that, I think you can go up to seven or 10. And so you could connect all of your sites and then go into StreamYard and do like a live broadcast and kind of, it's, it's like going live or you can schedule it too. So it, that you would have both options. Unincorporated, do we just register with the county? Yes. If, if you do not fall into the city or town jurisdiction, then you just, if, if the only reason you'd have to register with the county, again, if you chose to do the LLC route, if you're a sole proprietor, you do not have to, so. Just meta is overwhelming. It uh, is an ever-changing, I don't even know what to say about meta, right? It's just crazy, but there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. You know, and, and the first thing to do, and you know, I do this with a lot of folks, is just getting the Google profile set up, getting the Facebook page, and then just slowly learning how to kind of use, how to tag, how to share, how to share other content from websites or things like that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time, right? Because that's exhausting. So if you were to do one thing with Meta, what would be the first thing you'd do? The first thing, the only thing to do with Meta is to sign up for a business page. That is the one thing I would do. And then call us and we'll walk you through it. So we don't do this like in one meeting. <laughs> this is over many meetings that we're just looking at different things, seeing what worked, you know, this is baby steps. So just breathe everybody. Meta is ever changing. You're never gonna, I never know everything. 
something will change tomorrow and I'm going to have to rethink how I do something. So, but we're here to help. We're here to help you get started. It's, you know, just baby steps. Other question. If I want to promote my business in other countries, do I need to register nationally? So you can um, target, Facebook is an international company, obviously with 3 billion people, they are everywhere. So Facebook, if you do sell internationally or, you know, I, we have people that do exporting, we do all kinds of things. And I'll talk just a little bit about more, some of the things we help with, but yeah, so you can target on, um, it would be a paid ad, but you can target actually internationally on Facebook. So that's a, a good thing to do. Same with Google. So we also help a lot of folks with business planning, writing a business plan, whether you want to get a loan, um, you need investors. So a lot of, you know, we help people. We have a cool online it's called Live Plan, and that is free if you're a client of ours. Otherwise, you'd have to pay for it. So that's, um, we offer lots of trainings. We help hook you up with government contracting if that's something you're interested in, exporting the international market. Um, Loans. We help a lot of people get the SBA loans or any other programs that you might be eligible for. Um, we help. What else do we do, Danusha? Well, pretty much anything you need to get your business going, with the exception of tax planning and legal yes. advice. That's yes, we can't do your taxes and we can't be your attorney, but we will refer you. <laughs> we also can't, I can't do your social media for you. I'm here to assist you. But if you want, you know, if this is overwhelming. It's not something that's your passion, but you do want, need to understand why you're doing it, why you might be spending money on this so that if you do hire a social media company, which we can refer you to, um, that you understand what you're paying for. I have people come and say, oh, I'm paying $500. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money a month. Are you kidding me? What are you getting for that? Let's look at that. Let's see if it's really benefiting your business, right? Um, so that happens a lot. People come to us kind of after the fact. And that's okay, you know, but uh, some sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So <laughs> anyway, okay, we are almost out of time. Any last minute questions? Okay, hey, I finished all the time. This is a miracle. Uh, reach out to us if you need some help. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh. One more question. You specialize in marketing. I specialize in marketing. Yes. <laughs> I've been doing marketing. I used to be a healthcare administrator back in the day. So I, I have operations experience, been there, done that. Uh, but I transitioned into marketing sales and I am actually getting my meta certification as a social media, I don't know, professional cer certificate. It's taking me six months and I'm still not done gang. So I don't know if I'd recommend it to anybody, but it is very thorough. It's very good. Um, yes, I try to keep up to date and help out as much as I can. So anything else before we? Yes, I have one Thanks more question. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. Join us tomorrow, Facebook Live on our Facebook page, YCSBDC. Thanks.